this video, we're going to discuss about the predicates and quantifiers. So, simulan natin yung discussion sa predicates. So, let you be the collection of objects whose properties are under consideration. And we have P of X. It's the statement that describes the variable X. Again, a statement that describes the variable X where X takes in values from U. So, for example, x is greater than 3, yung x ay dapat galing sa u, given u, under consideration. So, ang tawag sa x ay yung subject. Tapos, is greater than 3, ito naman yung predicate. Okay, so, kumbaga sa simple English lang yan, no? yung subject and predicate. Yung x, syempre nag-uusapan, tapos yung nagde-describe dun sa x, ayun yung ating predicate. Okay, now, yung P of X, so yung X is greater than 3, pwede natin siyang i-translate into symbol as P of X. X is greater than 3. So dito, yung P, siya yung nagde-denote sa predicate, and yung X, yun yung variable nga. Yung P of X, uh, pwede natin siyang masabi as value ng propositional function P at X. So, bakit siya? propositional function, yung P. Kasi, once a value has been assigned to the variable X, kapag naglagay ka ng ano dyan, specific uh, value for X, then magkakaroon, or yung statement P of X, magiging proposition, at kung naging proposition yan, magkakaroon siya syempre ng truth value. So, ganun, uh, ganun siya nangyari kung bakit, uh, bakit natin tinuturing siya as propositional function. Okay, so sa bawat insert mo ng variable x, nagiging proposition tong p of x at nagkakaroon ng truth value, either 1 or 0. Okay, so for example, so magbigay tayo ng statement, let's say x is even number. Okay, tapos sa second statement, let's say x plus y equals 4 and x, y equals 3. Then let's say another statement, x squared plus y squared plus c squared equals 14. Okay? So meron tayo ditong tatlong statement. So dito, x yung subject, ito yung predicate, is even number. Dito naman ang subject natin, x plus y, uh, x tsaka y subjects. Dito naman, x, y, z, no? So, now, pwede natin siyang i-translate into symbol. So, dito, pwede natin siyang gawing p of x. So, that is, uh, x is even number. So, yan yung p of x natin. And, eto, pwede naman gawin q, x, y. So, yung statement na yan, that is, x plus y equals 4, and x, y equals 3. Then, so for third statement, we have x, y, z. Okay, so ibig sabihin, tatlo yung subjects natin dyan. Then, we have x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 40 for our statement. Okay, so para ma-imagine nyo, uh, let's say, yung u natin ay set of all integers. So, let's say yung u ay set of all integers. Okay. Then, mag-assign tayo ng value ng x kay p of x. So, let's say 1. Oh, p of 1. Then, yung statement natin magiging 1 is even number. Okay. So, naging proposition na siya. 1 is even number. And ano yung truth value niya? So, this is logically equivalent to 0. Kasi, hindi naman even number yung 1. Okay. So, let's say mag-assign tayo ng 2 kay x. So, dito kay p of x. So, for p of 2, that is 2 is even number. So, this is logically equivalent to 1 kasi it is true that 2 is even number. 2 is an even number. Okay? Now, so dito mag-assign tayo sa q x, y. So, let's say q 2, 2. So, magiging ano siya? 2 plus 2 equals 4. Okay? And 2 times 2 
equals 3. Okay? So, yan. Parang siya substitute lang natin yung x tsaka y. Diba? And this is logically equivalent to 0. Okay, bakit? Kasi yes, tama to. 2 plus 2 equals 4. But 2 times 2 is not equal to 3. Okay, so that is 0. Okay, so... So let's try R... Uh, 2, 3, 4. So, kapag nilagay natin siya sa statement, that is 2 squared plus 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 14. Okay? So, is this correct? So, this is uh, this is logically equivalent to 0. Kasi dito pa lang sa 4 squared, o 16 na yan. No? So, imposible naman pa yan. 14. So, let's try r 1, 2, 3. So, that is 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared equals 14. So, ganyan yung magiging statement natin. And, di ba yung 3 squared 9, tapos 1, 10, eto 4, o 14. Tama. So, this is logically equivalent to 1. Okay? So, next. Okay, so next, let's have quantifiers. So, ito, yung quantification dito, ina-express natin yung statement in the extent to which yung predicate is true over the given range of elements. Okay? Kumbaga, yung statement ba, uh, statement ba na to ay tama para sa lahat ng x, lahat ng values ng x, or baka sa ilang values lang ng x, or baka sa isang, at least one value of x, tama siya. Okay, so yun yung purpose ng ating quantification or quantifiers. So, meron akong dalawang kinds of quantifiers na i-discuss hanggang sa mga susunod na lesson. So, la, na, uh, the first one is universal quantifier. So, the universal quantification of P of X is the statement P of X for all values of X in the domain. Okay, so ito pang la, uh, nila lahat niya for all values. Okay, kaya siya tinawag na universal. So, the notation, this symbol, okay, denotes the universal quantification of P of X. So, take note yung nakabaliktad na A. Yung nakabaliktad na A na yan, yan yung symbol for universal quantifier. Okay, so, kailan nagiging true at kailan nagiging false ang universal quantifier? So, nagiging true siya, kapag yung p of x ay true for every c in u. Okay? So, halimbawa, meron tayong u, syempre, may mga values dyan. And then, kapag in-insert natin lahat yan kay statement p of x, at kapag yung statement p of x is always true, or true sa lahat ng values na naka u, then yung quantifier natin, universal quantifier natin is true. Okay? Then, kapag meron tayong nakita na yung P of X is false, kahit isa lang na C in U. Okay, so, in-insert natin yung C kay P of X, tapos ang nangyari kay P of X, false, kahit isa lang. Then, automatic yung universal quantifier natin will be zero. Okay, so, magiging false yung universal quantifier. For example, let u be the set of all real numbers. Tapos, let's say yung statement natin ay x squared greater than 0. Okay? So, kapag ang ginawa natin, p of 1, try natin yung p of 1, that is 1 squared greater than 0. So, this is true. Okay? Yung p of negative 2, that is negative 2 quantity squared greater than 0. Still true kasi 4 yan, no? Pero, kapag na may nakita tayong isang value lang na na kay u, na kapag sinubstitute natin kay p of x, ang mangyayari sa p of x ay magiging logically equivalent to 0, then yung magiging universal quantifier dyan ay 0. So, for example, Ito, meron tayong, ah, uh, yung 0, isubstitute natin, P of 0. So, 0 squared greater than 0. So, this is logically equivalent to 0. 
Okay, false yan kasi 0 is not greater than 0. So dito meron tayong nakitang element ni u na nagpa-false kay p of x. So therefore, for all x, p of x, this is logically equivalent to 0. Yung universal quantifier natin ay 0. Okay, so para... So, sa madaling salita, para ma-prove natin na false ang universal quantifier, madali lang. Hanap lang tayo isa na magpapa-false kay P of X. Okay, so damay na yan lahat. Now, let's have another kind. We have existential quantifier. The existential quantifier of P of X is the proposition there exists an element X in the domain such that P of X so, dito naman sa existential quantifier, uh, isa lang ang requirement. Okay? So, kahit isa lang ang mag-exist na x para maging true ang p of x, then okay na si existential quantifier. So, dito hindi yung universal quantifier nila lahat niya. Pero itong existential, ang requirements niya lang, kahit isa lang. Okay? So, okay na siya dun. So, we use the notation... Uh, the symbol, ito naman nakabaliktad na E for the existential quantification of P of X and itong nakabaliktad na E na to is called the existential quantifier. So, kailan nagiging true at kailan naman nagiging false ang existential quantifier? So, nagiging true ang existential quantifier kapag yung P of X is true for at least 1C in U. So, katulad nga ng sinabi ko kanina, uh, kahit isa lang may mapakita ka na element ni U na true yung, magiging true yung P of X, then okay na kay existential. Automatic true na siya. Okay? Pero kapag wala kang mapakita, so if P of X is always false for every C in U, then uh, yung existential quantifier magiging zero. Okay, so isa na nga lang hinihingi niya, wala ka pang mabigay, so doon na siya magiging false. Okay, so ibig sabihin, madali siyang i-prove na true. Okay, kasi kapag magpalabas ka ng isa, then true na yung existential quantifier. So, kapag wala kang mapalabas na isa, so therefore, doon siya magiging false. Okay. Okay, so for example, ah, uh, Halimbawa, yung U natin ay age of first year uh, set of all age pala. Set of all ages of first year BS Math in UCC. Okay. Then, let's say yung P of X natin yung p of x natin that is x age is greater than 100 okay so yan yung statement natin so dito may mapapakita ka ba na first year bs math ng ucc na ang age niya ay greater than 100 okay so dito wala wala naman sa first year BS math no nang edad ay 100 mas ay mas mataas pa sa 100 grabe 60 pa nga lang wala na eh no so therefore dito yung existential quantifier natin is 0 okay so syempre kung wala wala na tayong mapakita so sure tayo na yung universal quantifier, zero din. Okay? So, sa kabilang banda, kapag naman yung universal quantifier ay 1, so, susunod naman yung existential quantifier, magiging 1 din. Okay? Kasi, kay universal lahat eh. E di, eh, kay, kay existential, isa lang kailangan niya. At least 1. O, e di, magtuturo na rin siya. ba? So, ganun lang siya kasi... For additional discussion lang, okay, so, pero itong quantifier na to ay hindi ko isasama sa mga discussion sa susunod na videos. So, let's have uniqueness quantifier. 
So, yung uniqueness quantifier denoted by E with exclamation uh, E. Ituloy. Baliktad na E with exclamation point or E sub 1. No? E na lang. Basta baliktad yan. Then, the, no the notation. So, eto. States there exists a unique X. Okay. So, nakita nyo pagkakaiba, no? Yung, yung walang exclamation, that is there exists X, no? Pero eto, there exists a unique so, ito, uh, ina-emphasize niya na unique lang, isa lang, such that P of X is true. So, other phrases niyan, there is exactly one, o kaya there is one and only one. Okay, so, minsan kasi ginagamit yung uniqueness quantifier sa proof, especially doon sa part ng advanced calculus, o kaya sa real analysis. So, minsan ginagamit natin yung notation na yan. Kaya ako siya sa, sinama sa discussion na to. Pero sa mga susunod nating discussion sa fundamentals, ang gagamitin lang natin ay yung universal quantifier at existential quantifier. So, hindi natin gagamitin to Although, uh, minsan, ang nangyayari dun sa existential, isa lang, unique lang. Pero, kahit unique siya, existential pa rin ang gagamitin natin. So, eto, kumbaga, uh, additional lang siya. Kasi, baka ma-encounter nyo siya sa mga susunod na uh, subjects. So, yun nga, like advanced calculus or real analysis. Okay, so, hanggang dito lang yung ating discussion for uh, predicates and quantifiers. Music